So far, we've discussed a lot of amazing advantages of 3D printing technology. However, it's important to note that there are geniuses out there that will use innovative technology like 3D printing for nefarious, unintended purposes. And aside from that, there's also unintended negative consequences that come with this technology that has no malicious intent. It's just the way it is. So in this portion of the 3D printing workshop presentation, we're going to cover the dark sides of 3D printing. So this video is meant to be educational, not fear provoking. But if you're someone that is sensitive to certain topics, then maybe this video is not the ideal one for you to watch. That being said, we're going to get to a lot of different topics today. But let's start with how this disruptive technology can affect jobs in a negative manner. And when you hear the term disruptive technology, it simply means that there's a new technology that displaces the normal way an already established market operates. So many lower income jobs rely on production to feed their families. This can especially be true of third world countries where manufacturing jobs is vital not only to the individual workers and their families, but also to their society as a whole. As the adaptation of 3D printing grows, there will inevitably be a reduction in the need for human labor. 3D printing is definitely a disruptive technology, and small manufacturing companies might be hit the hardest by the disruption wave. Weaknesses of traditional methods like efficiency, speed, and cost tend to get exposed when technological savvy solutions show up. And on top of that, the barrier of entry for small manufacturers is difficult to overcome because some of the industrial 3D printers cost upwards of $100,000. Now, it can of course be argued that with some jobs being lost, others are created in the 3D printing industry. However, with technology and computer programs running more of the show, there will obviously be less opportunities for the lower income manufacturing gigs. So now we're going to jump into the potentially really disturbing aspect of 3D printing. Digital files exist that can be sent to a 3D printer to print guns, bombs, and other weapons. That's simply the reality today. The dissemination of these files can create mass production of weapons by nefarious characters like gang members, criminals, the cartel, and underground weapon distributors. The proliferation of these weapons is especially scary because there is really no way to trace them back to the maker or the original owner as can be done with many of the traditional guns sold in stores. This creates an interesting dilemma between what can and can't be regulated by the government. Even if the government outlaws something being printed on a 3D printer, it's very difficult to actually keep track of that. The other alarming aspect of potentially using additive manufacturing to print weapons is that they can be undetectable. At airports, schools, courthouses, and other locations where weapons are forbidden, a metal detector is commonly used as a safety measure at entrance. However, 3D printed guns can use dense plastic material rather than metal for gun parts and thus pass through metal detectors with ease. There's really no way to detect what someone is 3D printing on their own printers. And since companies like Defense Distributed used to offer open source CAD files of guns to be used by DIY enthusiasts, God only knows how many people have these files currently. And the reality is that a skilled engineer with CAD experience or computer-aided design expertise can recreate digital files of gun parts with relative ease. Crypto anarchist and gun right activist Cody Wilson of Defense Distributed is credited with being the first to 3D print guns with the objective of releasing his files online to be used as open source gun blueprints. It has been estimated that the gun blueprints by Defense Distributed were downloaded 100,000 times before the US government stepped in and forced them to remove the files. However, we should point out that guns being untraceable is nothing new and it's not a problem originating with 3D printing. It is estimated that in the US alone, there are well over 100 million unregistered, unlicensed, and untraceable guns today. This is not just a problem for the United States. In Japan, a maker of the zigzag gun was sentenced to two years in prison for printing guns and posting videos on the internet describing the process. 
Now let's jump into something that I feel sincerely does not get enough discussion in the 3D printing world, and that is unhealthy air emissions during the 3D printing process. When materials are melted to be used as filament, there are very small particles that are released into the air. The health implications of inhaling very small particles is that they can deposit deep inside your lungs where gas exchange takes place and then they can enter your bloodstream which also means they have the potential to pass the blood-brain barrier and enter your brain as well. 3D printers also emit something called VOCs which are volatile organic compounds, some of which are known to be carcinogenic. The solution to this issue should be twofold. Manufacturers of 3D printers need to include some sort of air filtration process or a more sealed gas filtration process and do a better job of informing the user of these potential hazardous risks. The user themselves need to take accountability of their own health and wear a mask to prevent inhaling these emissions, especially if they are operating a 3D printer frequently and over the long term. Also, the filament used could contain less harmful chemicals so that when melted, the emissions are not as hazardous, similar to how paints have moved to be more low VOC. At the very least, 3D printers need to be operated where there are well-ventilated areas, either a room with filters or near an open window. I've been inside a lot of 3D printing labs, and the smell of chemicals can be overbearing. I've personally witnessed kids using 3D printers in a small unventilated room in a school setting with no air filtration in place, and it is worrisome. Please be aware of this downside of 3D printing, and if you see anyone using a 3D printer in an unventilated area and doing it frequently, it may be helpful to mention this to them. Another negative aspect of 3D printing is that it can be really complicated stuff. Earlier in the decade, many of the important 3D printing patents expired, making this technology available for anyone to use. In 2009, MakerBot was founded and started introducing and popularizing desktop 3D printers around the world. They are still considered a leader in the 3D printing space today, although other players like Formlabs have made a name for themselves in the space as well. Once this transition to the consumer market occurred, People started saying, oh, soon we'll be able to 3D print stuff we need. Can't find your wrench? Well, there's no need to run to the local hardware store and buy one. You'll simply be able to click print from the comfort of your own home. Can't find the scissors? Same thing. Click print. 3D printing industry optimists keep telling us we're a couple of years away from this reality since 2009. The honest truth is, we're incredibly far away from that because of how difficult the technology is and how specialized you need to be. Not to mention, printers and material is super expensive compared to just purchasing mass-produced products. You need to know how to work CAD programs, the technical maintenance aspects of the printers themselves, the file adaptation to the printer process. So let's take a minute to remind you of the convoluted process. In the design process, you have to learn how to use those computer-aided design programs. Now sure, you can purchase design files or use open source platforms like Thingiverse to skip this step, but then you still have to know how to maneuver around the file transfer process. Each 3D printing manufacturer has their own unique software where you have to be able to choose infill type, density, understand how to scale your designs, and how to position for optimal printing. Once you figure that out, printing the item itself is complicated because you have to understand the machine, how to maintain it, how to swap out film how to calibrate it. The number one complaint from educational institutions I work with is they get exhausted trying to problem solve issues with their printers. These are very fine-tuned machines, and when something goes awry, it's not always easy to figure out the fix. And to be honest, some of the well-known 3D printing manufacturers out there have less than ideal customer service departments, which aren't very helpful at all. And finally, you need to know how to clean the print, how to remove the supports without ruining your print, and how to sand it, how to cure it in some instances, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, 3D printing is a complex process and it takes more than watching a couple of YouTube tutorial videos to become proficient in it. 
Even with all the advancements made today, it's a time-consuming, specialized process with a learning curve which is steeper than most people realize. However, it's important to point out that when computers came out initially, people said the same exact thing. They're too difficult and complicated. This technology is only suitable for engineers and tech geeks. That went on for many, many years. And then before you know it, everyone had their own computer and quickly became reliant to an extent on the computer to accomplish their day-to-day -day tasks. And everyone became basically an expert in computers over a short span of time. So it's not unreasonable to think that the same thing can occur with 3D printing. Now we can't talk about the downsides of 3D printing if we don't mention IP theft. Intellectual property like trademarks, design patents, utility patents, and so forth can easily be infringed upon with 3D printing technology. It's really, really hard to regulate what is being printed in a private home or office setting without the consent of the original designer. There have been many issues with businesses recreating other people's designs or outright stealing them and selling them at a much lower cost. There are also 3D scanners out there that can scan objects, sculptures, figurines, you name it, and create a 3D design file in minutes. This means that if someone has an intricate design pattern on a sculpture, an unethical company can come along, scan the sculpture, and then sell it as their own. Now some may say, what are you talking about? If someone has a pattern, then it protects them from this type of problem. The reality is, first of all, patents are super, super expensive. And second of all, even if you have one, it takes a lot of time, money, and legal minds to fight these IP battles. And if a party is found guilty of infringing on someone else's intellectual property, the penalties are much milder than what you'd imagine them to be. There have been issues with designers posting their designs under Creative Commons laws for non-commercial use on open source platforms like Thingiverse, and then people coming along, opening up eBay stores, and selling their designs without issue. Aside from legal issues, it just hurts the originator and the underlying business. For instance, let's say a really cool looking Batman figurine for example, or a Pikachu figurine costs a lot of money. Rather than purchase it, people can just 3D print the scanned figurine and avoid paying the rightful owner of the design. 3D printing technology is getting better and better, and it's very reasonable to assume that soon we will not be able to easily distinguish from the original quality products and the knockoff 3D printed versions of them. So I know we just covered a lot of dark aspects of 3D printing. However, it's important to note that anything in this life, any technology, anything in general has pros and cons. So the purpose of this video was not to put a black stain on 3D printing per se. It's just to say that 3D printing is not just enhancing people's lives and adding to the sustainability of the world and revolutionizing industries. Just like everything else, there are some negative aspects to it and there are some downsides. However, overall, the benefits definitely outweigh the risks and this is a fantastic new technology that's creating a fourth industrial revolution in the world and hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if there's enough traction on it and enough requests the next video i create will be on the future implications of 3d printing and i've been wanting to create this one for a while because i've had the privilege of working with a lot of 3d printing experts in various fields and i wanted to give a little bit of my input on where I think this whole 3D printing thing is going. So definitely look out for that video. And please, like this video, comment, subscribe, share it with anyone that you think would find it interesting. And most importantly, stay hungry to continue learning about innovative technologies. This is a great way to stay ahead, to not fall behind on current trends, and to diversify your skill set. Hopefully you learned something today, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.